Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Civilian killings reported in Tigray and Ethiopia as aid agencies ward of starvation. Rural school students continue protest summits police repression in Mexico. Over 2,000 whale Canada workers go on strike after rejecting tentative deal. Warrior Met workers enter third month on strike for a fair contract in the US. In our first story, an Ethiopian aid worker has reportedly been killed after being hit by a stray bullet in the country's Tigray region. Negasi Kidane had been working for the Italian NGO, the International Committee for the Development of Peoples or CISP. He is the ninth aid worker reportedly killed in Tigray since the war began in November 2020. According to the latest available reports, the violent conflict in the region is ongoing. Local residents have confirmed the continued presence of Eritrean troops in the region. As per a June 1st report by The Guardian, 19 civilians were killed by Eritrean soldiers earlier in May. The University of Ghent has identified around 2,000 civilians killed in over 150 massacres since last year. Meanwhile, opposition parties in the region have placed the death toll at around 50,000. Around 1,228 cases of sexual and gender-based violence have also been recorded by the Regional Health Bureau since February. Military blockades and conflict in several zones have restricted humanitarian aid, especially to rural areas. The UN World Food Programme has stated that 5.2 million people or 91% of Tigray's people are in need of emergency food aid. About a quarter of the children screened have been found to be malnourished. Almost half of the pregnant and lactating mothers in 53 villages are either moderately or acutely malnourished. Local farmers in the region have been unable to grow food because of the looting and threats of violence by soldiers. The fighting has displayed around, displaced around 2 million people so far with over 60,000 living as refugees in Sudan. There have been reports of Eritrean and Ethiopian soldiers raiding refugee camps and attacking people. Moreover, the mass displacement has reportedly also been caused by attacks from the ethnic Amhara militia over a long-standing land dispute. The ongoing violence, including instances of extrajudicial executions, have pointed to possible atrocities in Tigray. In our next story, we go to Mexico, where thousands of people held a march as part of the ongoing protests in the Chiapas. Unrest began in May after student protesters from the Mark to Maxta Rural Norm Normal School were arrested. They had been protesting since May 12th to demand in-person admission exams. This is because most of the communities in Chiapas do not have access to the internet or computers. Following a breakdown of talks with the government, students held a protest on May 18th by blocking a toll booth. However, around 500 police officers arrived at the scene, deployed tear gas and arrested 95 protesters. Among them were 91 students and 4 indigenous displaced persons. While 74 female detainees have been conditionally released, 17 male students and at least 2 indigenous people continue to be imprisoned. All arrested students are facing charges of mutiny, rioting, gang membership, and robbery and violence. Female students also reported being sexually assaulted by police officers while in custody. Since then, other normalista students, teachers unions, and parents have been mobilizing to demand the release of the detainees. They are also demanding justice for the 43 students from Ayotzinapa who were abducted and forcibly disappeared in 2014 on their way to a protest. During one such protest outside the Maktumatsa school on Monday, Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets. Following Monday's attack, a protest march was held in the capital of Chiapas on June 1st. Protesters also set up a sit-in protest in the city central square, demanding a dialogue with the government of officials and President López Obrador. A protest by Normalista students in Puebla was also broken up by the police and several people were detained. Students from rural, normal or training schools have highlighted drastic cuts in funding. These schools are often the only accessible option for people in poor and indigenous communities. They provide food accommodation and other necessary resources for students. We now go to Canada where 2,400 workers in the city of Sudbury have gone on strike. Organized by the United Steelworkers Union, workers at the Vale Canada's mines, mill and smelter launched the action on June 1st. The strike was ratified after workers voted to reject the company's tentative agreement. The company had offered a five-year contract to workers at the Sudbury and Port Colborne facilities. Workers at both are represented by the local chapter 6,500 and 6,200 of the USW. The contract included a 4% pay increase over 5 years, starting with an increase of 0.5% per year for the first 2 years. It also included $2,500 in recognition pay for working through the pandemic. Another one-time payment of $3,500 was offered as a signing bonus. However, this was conditioned on the ratification of the deal. The agreement also introduced key changes to healthcare benefits. This included the removal of retiree coverage for people hired after June 1, 2021. While workers in Port Colborne have accepted the agreement, the Sudbury workers rejected it by a majority of 70%. Meanwhile, the company has announced that it will be suspending its operations in Sudbury. Striking workers have set up picket lines outside the facility. This is the first time that USW Sudbury workers have gone on strike since the year-long strike which ended in July 2010. 
And for our final story, we go to the US where over 1,000 workers in the state of Alabama have entered their third month on strike. Workers at the Warrior Met Coal Plant went on strike on April 1st to demand a fair contract and safe working conditions. Since then, the company has deployed increasingly hostile measures to break the strike. These include imposing a lockout, freezing non-wage benefits and hiring temporary workers. 11 miners were also arrested during a picket march last week. Here's a video featured on the ongoing struggle. Over 1,100 workers have been on strike since April 1st at the Warrior Met Coal Plant in Brookwood, Alabama. Organized by the local branch of the United Mine Workers Association, UMWA, the strike is currently among the longest running walkouts in the United States. Negotiations have continued into the strike, but Warrior Met has constantly refused to accept any of the demands put forward by the workers. Recently, I called a strike at uh, our operations in Alabama, uh, four local unions, and at Warrior Met. And many people might look at this and say, why did you do that? Over the past five years, Warrior Met has been a terribly difficult company for our people to work for. Working as long as 12 hours a day, seven days a week, in some of the most dangerous conditions in the mining industry in North America. These are the deepest mines uh, that we find in the United States. You go down an elevator, 2,000 feet, and these mines liberate so much methane they could destroy an entire city if indeed this methane could explode at one time. So we have people working in dangerous conditions, in deep mines, long hours, seven days a week, and even working or being forced to work on holidays. Among the measures imposed by the company's new owners in the name of bankruptcy are wage cuts as high as $6 per hour, loss of paid sick leave, loss of holidays, increased health care costs, and more. The workers have also complained of ruthless anti-worker measures, including layoffs as part of disciplinary measures. Workers are demanding reversal of all of these measures, along with a substantial hike in wages and benefits, to compensate for the losses made by them during this period. Warrior Met is one of the largest producers of metallurgical coal in the United States, which is used to produce steel in North America and Europe. The company has decided against releasing the first quarterly report for this year, citing market uncertainty, making it unclear whether the company's argument that it is suffering losses is based on facts. Shortly after the strike was launched, the company came up with a tentative agreement which offered a wage hike of $1.5 per hour increase over the next five years. We're on an unfair labor practice strike against Warrior Met Coal, and I don't know about everybody else, but I'm tired of the way they treat our people. I'm tired of the contract we've got. This deal was overwhelmingly voted against by union members with over 91% voting no. On April 12th, union members voted along similarly large numbers to continue their strike. Ever since then, the union has alleged that the company has become increasingly hostile towards them. A general lockout was imposed that froze some of the non-wage benefits that workers and their families enjoyed despite the wage loss. The company has recently hired dozens of outsourced contract workers to replace the strikers, even while negotiations continued with UMWA, the height of which was on May 26th, when 11 miners were arrested by the local police from a picket march against such outsourcing. Despite the company's hostility, striking workers have only received more support from outside the mines. The UMWA has set up a relief fund for the striking workers to partially compensate for lost wages. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.